What is up, comic collectors? There's a new week upon us, and it is a new week with new titles, new series starting, a lot of huge things. I'm really excited to dive into it. Let's not waste any time. Let's check out the top picks for this coming week. Out to the homies over at Big Time Collectibles. Check them out at their website, follow them on their social medias, and also you can find them on Whatnot Now five days a week, eight hours a day, doing awesome, awesome shows over there, hanging out, selling stuff, doing giveaways. Great, great, great trusted seller. Always recommend Big Time Collectibles. If you need anything cleaner, press though, check out the link in the description. You can find Justin over on Instagram. Let him know you found him via the channel and he can hook it up. He can take care of you. And also, as always, a huge shout out to my local comic shop, ABX Comics and Games. That's where I pick up all my comics. The link to their Facebook group is in the description as well. Uh, so is Pops Attic over on Instagram. If you're looking for some cheap back issues for sale, a lot of good stuff in the description. Don't miss out on all that. All right, let's get into it. Let's kick off the list. There's a lot of good stuff. This is the uh, top 10 pick. I threw one more in there because I couldn't decide. So there's technically uh, 11 on for this week, and we're kicking it off with Robbie's Detective Comics issue 1077. This is the second part of that bi-monthly, twice a month detective comic story he's doing called Batman Outlaw, the... Uh, Orgum family has completely bested the bat, and at this point, he's on his walk to his execution. The bat family is tied up with other events. It's left up to Catwoman to kind of put together a band of misfits to try to save his life and stop him. All the while, Azrael has been activated by himself and his glorious purpose to, uh, it looks like, don the Nightfall suit again and come back into the city and get the job done. So I'm really, really excited for Azrael to throw on the Batman Nightfall suit again. They teased it in that last issue. Uh, this detective comic story has just been fantastic. It's got all the tones, all the feels you'd expect of more gothic Batman storytelling. It's just honestly just enjoyable, man. And the fact that it's like long format storytelling, I'm digging a lot more. We're able to dive more into the characters. The villains don't just come and go as throwaways. We have huge context and backstories for the whole Orphan family and their ties to the Al Ghouls and all kinds of fantastic stuff. It's really just giving this series so much uh, needed weight. It's just in an era of like fast food storytelling, this is an epic. I'm just really digging it. Next up, going to one of my favorite modern writers of the day, Jeremy Adams is back with Green Lantern issue number five. Rage of the Red is here. Sinestro made his play in that last issue, revealing himself to Hal Jordan and that he too is uh, quarantined in Sector 2814, but without his ring. He wanted Hal's ring, finding out, unfortunately, that Hal's ring is a construct of his very own willpower and will not work for anybody else. So it looks like Sinestro is making an even bigger play in uh, summoning the rage of the Red Lanterns in some form or fashion. I'm not sure what he's got up his sleeve. He tends to be the street-level Sinestro with all kinds of tricks, but I'm definitely on board to see what he's going to do. We have a Wayward Son backup story uh, part two in that first one last month they introduced this character who's potentially the son of sinestro and i believe this will probably be building up to a bigger story arc to come jeremy adams is one of the most if not the most guaranteed trusted writer for me after what he did with that flash run what he's already doing with that first issue of the jay garrett flash run just what a great writer just if you haven't checked out his flash stuff do it if you haven't jumped on green lantern do it uh definitely a good time Next up, another one that's just, you know, I don't get to praise a lot of Marvel titles these days, so I enjoy getting to do it when I can. Benjamin Percy is writing an epic Ghost Rider run. I, I can compare it only to Immortal Hulk with its tones, its themes, its feel, its pacing. This the horrific style and nature of our main character. Every transformation is just a different, twisted, horrific turn into the uh, dark and twisted supernatural side of marvel comics and they're really delivering with this new almost sidekick character talia war road who's kind of like a, a female constantine s character i've been enjoying getting a glimpse more into her backstory as they've tied it into the cult of mephisto and brought that into the forefront of the current story that we're dealing with right now they're kind of uncovering this cult and how it endangers this town and these kids and trying to uh, see if they can even spare the children and save their parents in the process. And the only one who has the capability of doing it is the one that would condemn them to death. And that's none other than the ghost rider himself. So I'm all on board, locked and loaded, ready to ride. If you haven't checked out ghost rider, it's another one. I mean, we're, we're what 20 issues deep now, tough jumping in at this point, but it's definitely worth going back and picking up the trade paperbacks. And that's a lost art right there. Trade paperbacks. People should read more. 
definitely a definitely a blast. Here we go. Christopher Priest is back with issue number eight out of ten of Superman Lost. This has been a great standalone Elseworld solo title, uh, whatever you want to call it. Not main continuity, clearly, but it's uh, dealing with Superman having stopped a major event from happening, but it thrust him across space. It's taken him 20 years to get back home, and he's a changed person dealing with a lot of trauma, PTSD. And I know how that sounds, but it's solid. Check it out. We're also getting the story of what he did for those 20 years, and we're slowly unraveling the, the weight and uh, just the real, real gravity he had to deal with. You've watched civilizations fall in his wake, you know, when he advanced and tried to save, and it just took a toll on him. It's, it's like in this most recent issue, we saw Lois Lane go to get help from none other than Lex Luthor to try to snap Mark Kent out of the funk that he's in. That's how desperate she is. That's how bad Superman is from uh, all, this, all this trauma. And in doing this, Lex Luthor decided he will help. He kind of saw it coming. He predicted it coming. He actually gave Lois Lane cancer. The most twisted supervillain I've ever seen. The scene was just diabolical. Diabolical. It was, it was savage. And Lois it was shocked even. And Lex Luthor's take was, if there's one person who can save you, it'll be Superman. And now he has to. And the clock is ticking. So I am... I'm on the edge of my seat to see how they're going to play this out. That was a bold strategy. It was a bold move, but I think Christopher Priest has it handled. This story has just been uh, just solid from start to this point. I don't see it dropping anytime soon. So let's pause for the calls and give a huge shout out to Brian LCS. And if you haven't already, head over to the comic community, comic book community awards. It's the cbcawards.org and cast your votes. Thank you to all the legionnaires out there who voted for this channel to get it into the running and then to get it to be one of the finalists in uh, five categories, as well as being a part of numerous other categories with a lot of other great content creators. I get the opportunity and the pleasure to share screen time with, including sector 2815, who's nominated for guess that key. So head over there, cast your vote. You don't have the vote for me. Just uh, it's great to support the calls and find new channels and all kinds of good stuff like that, but definitely, definitely check it out. All right, next up, jumping right back into it, coming in at number five, and these are in no particular order. We have, Tom King, Jorge Fornes, and Dave Stewart's Danger Street. This man, issue 11. This has been awesome. This is definitely selected taste right here. This is not everybody's cup of tea, I know, but uh, this has been wild. At this point, we have this wide cast of characters all converging on each other. It looks like they're going to be fighting over who gets possession of Fate's helmet. Everyone wants it for different purposes, some for world domination, some to bring back their friends, some to correct mistakes they made in the past, and others want it for justice. Who's going to get a hold of it? What's going to happen? I don't know. But man, this has been a blast. Definitely, definitely can't wait for this. Speaking of Golden Age Heroes earlier, we've got issue number two of Wesley Dodd's Sandman. Robert Mendetti's writing this one. That first issue was awesome. The take on the Golden Age Sandman set in Golden Age era was fantastic. Wesley Dodds has always been the master of dreams, and he can give you a nightmare if he chooses to. And man, he came at people like the most sadistic Dark Knight style Batman I've seen. He would gas you instead of you going to sleep. It would like induce fear in you. And then he would just like fuel it. It was really cool. But we saw that he also is somewhat of a philanthropist. Is that how you'd say it? Trying to take his technology into the private and uh, military sector and use it as a force for good. It isn't getting working out the way he wants. He's trying to leave a positive imprint on society when he's gone. Always kind of doing it and motivated by the kind of man that his father was before him but he's seeing that some of his ideas technologies and even all of his uh, notes out of his lab have been stolen and by who we don't know yet and for what purpose we don't know yet but it's up to the sandman to see if he can uh, figure it out use those detective skills and get to the bottom of it if you're a fan of the golden age heroes we have three solid golden age uh, solo series out right now sandman jay garrett flash and alan scott green lantern this is a great time to be a golden age comic book character fan as well as a justice society fan don't miss out on these titles it's not very often that these characters get love and we got to support them when they do so that they know we're out here that they know that we're enjoying these and they'll potentially give us more so yeah if you, if you like these characters give these titles a shot man super solid super solid next up oh my god holy potatoes this was an emotional ride up and down and all around mark miller's Magnum Opus right here, Big Game, which is the culmination of all of his individual Miller World projects coming together like butt cheeks in one epic event from Wanted to Nightclub to Supreme or to literally Huck, Prodigy, Magic Order, Kick-Ass, all of them. 
all of them chrono knots all of them the only one that wasn't in there is i'm not going to say so uh i have the pleasure of reading this one early i don't own it i don't have it yet but i did get to read it early and oh my god it's everything i wanted and more oh my god oversized finale issue to this epic saga cannot wait to read it again cannot wait to discuss this with all the homies Holy potatoes, if you haven't been on Big Game, go back and get it. Go get it. If you've ever seen the movie The Kingsman or watched Kick-Ass or Jupiter's Legacy on Netflix or American Jesus or so many of these things are in film pro uh, projects now that you've probably seen some Miller World stuff and now it's represented in a shared universe with a cohesive story that it will absolutely blow your socks off. It's action-packed. It's funny. It's nerve-wracking. It's, it's all of these things. Mark Miller is a master storyteller for entertainment and quality to combine and this this was it look at nemesis slap dab in the middle oh my god wow what what a ride don't miss this series if you didn't get it go back and get it there's only five issues even if you didn't read all that other stuff read this get excited and know that it's going to open up an entire comic universe for you that's what it did to me i was familiar with a lot of these seen some of the movies but i read nemesis and i'm like i need more of this i need more nemesis and then this got announced and like I raced to read as much Miller World stuff as I could between every single issue of this. And now I've got like a Miller World library. It's just been such a fun journey into this uh, very unique universe. I cannot wait to see what comes next from this creative mastermind right here. Next up, another one that I'm equally hyped for. I also had the opportunity to read this early. Don't own it. Don't have it. Just managed to get a good look at it. And that's Geiger Ground Zero, which is the first in shelves at comic shops installment into the new ghost machine era if you don't know what ghost machine is i'll pin a video at the end of this one so you can check it out i went in depth on what all it is but geiger ground zero is going to be the two-part prequel to the uh very acclaimed geiger that came out last year so this is jeff johns and gary frank's creator own work at image comics it was under mad ghost they've expanded the imprint it's now ghost machine and this is going to go back and touch on the events before that first volume, it explain hows and whys and who's and what's. You get to see him more in a time before the bombs fell. You'll get to see how he went from uh, minus one to the point of where we see him in that original book. Much needed foundation to be built, knowing that there's going to be an ongoing series starting next year for Geiger. So they have to go back and put the foundation to build the empire of the unnamed universe on top of. Very exciting stuff coming from mad ghost don't miss out on it you have the opportunity to get in at the ground level with so many of these new characters from these uh all-star creators that are all coming don't miss out next up another huge announcement gi joe real american His hero issue 301 but if you look image comics skybound imprint so it's robert kirkman's first issue so what this is is they're keeping the original numbering from gi joe real american hero but just slapping the image uh, number one. This is the first issue from Image. This is the Energon universe from what I understand. Obviously, G.I. Joe and Transformers are already crisscrossing at Image Comics. It just happened last week in Transformers issue number two. We saw Duke duking it out for area superiority against Starscream. But are they going to do something with this first issue? Is this going to be tying into the Energon universe off the rip? All I know is that they promised that not all of the Joes will make it out of this first issue issue alive now i do have gi joe number one back here i have not dove into it i'm trying to finish off transformers volume one i'm about halfway through reading it before i dive into the joe stuff but i am going to go ahead and jump on with this first image issue right here with issue 301 i'm excited for it i love that they're homaging the original number one cover so we'll see where it goes not missing out on this image is just firing on all cylinders right now from the skybound imprint to the ghost machine imprint coming image is just there's not a big two anymore it's a big three there's no denying it it's just there they're there there we have arrived there are three major comic publishing companies now image dc and marvel next up the final marvel on the list for this week is going to be none other than silver surfer rebirth legacy this is the second volume in ron lynn and ron's mars retro title it's a throwback title a flashback title the events of this take place between the pages of the original run that ron lynn and mars did for silver surfer and we find that legacy has been tricked into stealing the time stone and it's all because of mephisto after all and we have a pretty much an infinity watch style story fantastic action uh just fun character interactions it just feels good feels nostalgic i'm enjoying a lot of these retro titles i wish all of Marvel's titles were retro titles at this point, but uh, definitely one for any Silver Surfer fan out there for certain. It's way better than that ghost-like crap that they put out. 
Next up and last one that had to be put on the list is Rocketeer. Den of Thieves hits its finale with issue number four this week. If you think back to that Joe Johnson movie, Rocketeer from the 90s, when they showed Cliff, the propaganda film that came out of Germany and how the Nazis wanted all of their soldiers to have a rocket pack to fly over the other countries. That's what this is. That's this coming to life for the old Cliff and company. This is fantastic. If you're a Rocketeer fan, if you like those old timey throwback 1940s, 50s type stories, a little bit of sci-fi, this is it. Don't miss out. Rocketeer. Love me some Rocketeer. So that's going to be it for my top picks for this week. I know it went on a little long, but there's a lot of good stuff to look at and talk about. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're looking forward to, what's on your list. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.